It's time for us to implement jumping mechanics, which is going to start fleshing down our game. Right now it's a bit boring, isn't it? But before that, I want to mention an excellent comment I got on the last video. Pete made a very good point. He says, I would say that the right way to do input is a combination of both methods. So by both methods, he means using the input object in the process function and using the input function and in the input events. For walking, you want to use is action pressed in process because you care about the state of the key. If it's pressed during the frame, the character walks. For jumping or shooting, you want to use input because you only care about the frame when the key was pressed and not the rest. So it's okay to combine both. That's absolutely true. Because of that, I reworked the base script and you can find a new script in the description. Let's take a look at it really quickly. It's very similar to what we had in the previous video. There are just a few changes. So first of all, I moved the input code back into process. And then I changed the speed variable to speed underscore X and added a new speed underscore Y variable. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, this doesn't change too much. It's just to make it clear that as far as the horizontal movement is concerned, we are only working on the X component of the speed vector. I decided not to turn it into a vector though, because I'd like us to look at what a vector is and how it works in a dedicated video. I also added so speed Y, with which we'll be working in this video. This will be the vertical speed of our character when it's jumping upwards and when it's falling. I did another thing, I changed the velocity variable into a vector two, and that just changes these two lines at the bottom of the script. Now when we integrate the x speed, we multiply the speed on the horizontal axis by the time delta and the character movement direction, we want to work only on the x component of that new velocity vector. And that simplifies the last line, when we call the move function, it needs a vector2 as its parameter. So you can just pass velocity now. Oh, and for good measures, I took my little character, Dan, the furious rabbit. I thought that it would give the game more character, adding a character. Yeah. To get started, we need two things. First of all, we need to handle the jump-related input. Let's go to Scene, Project Settings, and add a jump entry in the input map, just like we did in the last video. So I'll just enter jump, press enter, go down. Uh, okay, it's been added right there. And I'll just add two keys, the up key, first and foremost, and then the W key. Okay, we can close that. Now it's time to implement the jump itself. So let's jump onto the script tab and add a few constants. First of all, we need to define how high the character is going to jump. And for that, we'll use a vertical upwards force. And I'll call, call that jump force. I'll set it to 800. Let's try that. And then we need some gravity to pull the character down. So the jump force and gravity are going to be two opposite forces that uh, will counterweight one another. So gravity, 2000 maybe, you can go pretty high with that. Okay, but that in itself is not going to do anything. So we have our speed y variable defined, and it's time to start affecting it with some input first and foremost. In the input function, we'll be listening to the moment the jump key is pressed. So if the event dot is action pressed method returns true when we ask for the jump action, we are going to set speed y to the opposite of jump force. Let me explain why we take minus jump force. This is due to the fact that in a game, the y axis is positive downwards. In most game engines, it's not the case in every single engine, but in most 2D engines, that's the case. The 
x-axis is positive towards the right and negative towards the left, but the y-axis is positive when you go down and it's negative if you go up. Because of that, if we set our speed y to jump force, our character is going to go down. We want him to go up when the player presses the jump key. Hence, we have to add a little minus sign. Here's how it's going to work. When we apply the jump force, we apply it on the very moment, the very frame the jump key is pressed. And from there on, the gravity is going to start pulling the character down straight away. So I'll go down to the bottom of the script. Let me add a few lines at the bottom so I can center the code on the screen. And I'll just uh, set speed y in the process function, so on every frame. I'm going to add gravity times delta to speed y. This is going to make the character accelerate downwards. Remember, we are adding gravity to the y-axis. It's positive downwards, so it's going to pull the character down. And now it's not going to do anything if we test the game just yet, because we have to put that in the velocity vector. So let's type velocity.y. We're going to set the vertical component of the velocity vector to move the character on the vertical axis. And we're going to set it to speed y times delta. There we go. And if we test the game now, you're going to see it's it should be quite interesting. Yeah, the character goes down. And if I press the jump key many times, he comes back up. The jump is actually working. There you go. That's how you implement a jump. Now, the thing is, uh, the character is falling infinitely because there's nothing to stop him. And that's why we need to add collisions now. That's what we're going to do now. How can we make our character not fall uh, through the ground, which doesn't exist, so we have to add some collisions. I'm going to run you through collision creation really quickly, and in another video we'll look at collisions in greater details and how to interact with them in the code. First of all, we need to add some collision box to our character. Note that I made a video that explains how basic collisions work in-game, like how the computer handles them. Uh, go check that out for some useful info on how it works behind the scenes. We'll look more into it as we go with our project. Okay, so let's add a collider to our character. You want to select the kinematic body, and as a direct child of this node, you want to add a collision object 2D and we'll choose collision shape 2D. The collision shape 2D is uh, some kind of helper that's going to store the shape that Godot will use to check for collisions because we don't use the sprite itself to check for every pixels if it's uh, colliding with something in the game. We're going to use simple geometric shapes like rectangles, squares, circles, etc. In our case, we're going to use a square for the character. And for platformers, I highly recommend you to use squares or rectangles for all of your characters. It just makes the collisions really precise. In other engines, some people use capsules and stuff like that. It's not a great idea in most cases, especially for a simple platform game like the one we're making. Now we have our collision shape, we need to create a shape object. So let's select the collision shape in the scene tree. And in the inspector, we'll add a new rectangle shape 2D to our collision shape 2D node. Once we've done that, we can just edit it directly in the editor. We can move it, scale it, be sure to scale it using the two new dots that appear next to the shape and not scale using the scale tool because you can see there's some padding around it, there are some margins and it's not so great to use. You really want to set your rectangle size precisely. So we're going to give the character a hitbox that's a bit smaller than him. 
generally a good idea with uh, platform characters to have a small hitbox for the player and maybe a bit larger for others just so that can jump pretty easily, doesn't hit walls too fast. The character does have a collider now, but it will still fall to infinity and beyond. What we need is another collider that the character can interact with, and that will be the ground. So let's go back to our world. Let's add a node 2D first and foremost. That's going to allow us to place our ground the way we want to. I'll call it ground. And then under it, we can add a new collision shape. There we go. And uh, give it a new rectangle shape 2D. It's up there. So let's make it pretty big. And now when we select the ground itself, with the W key, we can move it to some other place. For our character to be able to collide with the object, we need to define it as some kind of physics-related object. We need to tell Godot, okay, this needs to be taken in account when collisions happen. To do that, we'll use another node than the kinematic body, one that's quite similar to it, the static body 2D. This is a very simple node that just describes static things. Walls, the ground, things you don't want your characters to go through. And then we need to add the collision shape as a child of the static body. And now, if we try out the game, look at what happens. There you go. The character falls and stops on the ground. We can always click on that little network icon, I'm not sure what that is, antenna, and activate the visible collision shapes option. Then when we try out the game again, we'll be able to see the collision shapes themselves. The character doesn't walk along the floor and for that we need a little more code. You know, you can still move in the air, no problem, but not on the ground. We'll fix that in the next video. And that's it. Thank you kindly for watching. See you in the next one.